Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, February the 5th. It's Unenjoyment Friday. It is the first Friday of the month. That means we get the major unemployment number today out of the United States. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but first let's go across the pond and look at German factory orders coming in at negative 1.9%, worse than the expected negative 1.2%. They did revise last month's number up, albeit only slightly, not making up for really that headline number, but making it look not so bad. Uh, move over here to the United States. Let's get on with the unemployment rate here in the United States coming in at 6.3%, expected to be 6.7%. That would indicate a good sign that unemployment rate going down, meaning more and more people are employed. But we saw the non-farm payroll unemployment change coming in at only 49,000 hires, expected to be 85,000 hires. And last month's number was revised down to a negative 227,000 uh, basic layoffs there versus what was expected at 140,000 layoffs. So 87,000 more people were laid off last month than what we originally saw that makes this number look horrible. Why did the unemployment rate go down? Maybe people who stopped claiming unemployment, discouraged workers, they stopped claiming unemployment, they may not be hired, but they fall off the unemployment stat because they aren't claiming unemployment, all right? So that's how that number works there. Uh, the headline number, what everybody usually looks at is that unemployment rate, but they don't dig into these details, that non-farm payroll change is what we need to look at. And that shows that people are getting laid off more than they're getting hired still now with the uh, continuous lockdowns there going on uh, here in the United States. All right, let's get on with the markets. Crude oil continues to move higher. It looks like 60 is almost a sure thing, folks, unless we start seeing some weakness. But yesterday we got that topping pattern, no confirmation to the upside or to, uh, uh, as a top, I should say. Today, making a continuing pattern to make this look like it's going to move to the upside and test that $60 handle. Gold futures back into the 18 handle. 1800 handle here making a little bit of a comeback after yesterday's massive sell-off just falling out of bed you know uh it was the gold futures were kind of falling out of bed on the strengthening of the dollar although the strengthening of the dollar was not anything to write home about it's continuing to strengthen today and we're getting a move back into the 1800s for gold so that whole uh Thesis doesn't really work with gold all of the time, um, as we have seen in the last couple of days there. Um, bonds are continuing their weakness here. Uh, the 167 handle uh, is back in play here, trading just below our Fibonacci here. And yesterday made it look like we were getting a bit of a bottom here, but no confirmation again today. Today making another bottoming pattern type chart set up. So we'll have to wait till probably Monday or actually really at the end of the day, see how this chart looks. If it were to look like it does right now or even higher, we would have to wait for Monday for a confirmation to see this market want to make a move back towards that 170 handle. Um, VIX is coming off and we got a bit of a mixed bag here in the equities. You can see the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 112 points. Uh, NASDAQ is up 28 points. It's probably going to be all in green right now because I just said we got a mixed bag. Uh, overnights were create, or overnight highs were created, um, but not during the day session, at least uh, five minutes ago when I started shooting this. May have uh, printed that because equities were looking a little weaker uh, this morning or right before I went on here. We can see E mini SP is back into positive territory. Overnight high created. Tried to print that during the day session, came up just slightly shy of printing a new high in the day session here in the E-mini S&Ps, but the day is not done. I mean, surprising strength considering that unemployment number really, uh, to be honest here. Ford did come out with earnings better than expected. Earnings call went off pretty well. They were talking a lot about EV. One of the drawback, uh, one of the problems with their earnings here that they noted was that they are having difficulty getting a computer chip 
for the F-150. They're gonna cut back on production. This is their most popular uh, vehicle and most profitable vehicle for that matter. But the F-150 chip being difficult to uh, source right now and they are going to cut back on production by about 20%. So um, those didn't, uh, th that talk about the F-150 didn't really put a complete damper on the whole rally here. As you can see, we're still up on the day, but once they started talking about that, that's where we got the slam. Now that uh, the, the conversation is over, we're starting to see a resurgence to the upside here in Ford on those earnings there. Um, then we talk about Penn, nothing really to talk about here other than it is still a rip your face off rally in Penn. As you can see, up 10%, actually it was up close to 10% earlier today, uh, but up $10 on the day. You can see it traded 129, lining up with these Fibonacci's I threw in there as the extensions. You can see the other 200 extension here at 144.50. Guys, remember I have covered calls on here at 140 there. Uh, so I thought it would take a little bit longer to make these moves, but we can see we're starting to gap a little bit here. I would. And despite the fact that I'm long this stock, I would like to see a little bit of pullback here just so I can have a couple of days of breathing room to get out of my covered calls. Remember, I sold them at 140 just the other day for 90 cents. Those are not looking very good right now, but the stock obviously uh, making the moves to the upside is helping that position quite nicely. All right. Uh, and why not talk about GameStop? They have already uh, had a couple of halts today on market volatility. As you can see, we did get some volatility in the morning creeping into this market as we had a big, huge rally. The uh, uh, Robinhood traders are back. They are allowed to trade GameStop again. So they came back in the markets full force trying to drive this market. But, you know, that 200-day simple moving average plays into this market as well. As you can see, we saw some weakness there in and around that level uh, and starting to see some profit taking going on or just the market lost that momentum from those early morning Robinhood traders. And that's all I've got for you folks is uh, those three things. Those are what I'm really looking at. Not playing GameStop anymore. I'm kind of done with that, but I can't take my eyes off of it. Ford, I'm going to play uh, play out here. I'm not going to do covered calls in it or anything like that uh, at this point. It's just uh, not really worth it for me. Uh, other than that, my IRA continues to crush my trading account over there on these moves on a daily basis, and it is probably you know a tenth of the value of my trading platform. So that's good to see uh, that it is doing very well. Uh, generally speaking, it doesn't do as well as my trading account, but the last couple of days with the pen moves, gold coming back today, uh, gumbo, if you guys remember, I put in there doing very well uh, also, and oh, V-Mint, that's something I wanted to talk about. This one really blasted off the last couple of days. Remember, they are in the gold sector here, but they are making some big moves the last few days, as we'll see here in the chart, you can see as soon as we basically got above $1, the shorts, if there were any shorts in here, were on their heels. But this market just blasting off. You can see trading a new high today again. Um, and I got into this stock at around 19 cents. So that is a nice move on VMENT. Uh, remember, I bought them because they basically picked up a couple of gold mines. All right, so that's all I've got for you guys. Uh, please take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we are an educational company. I'm not trying to get you guys to jump off the cliff with me or do any of that. What I am trying to do, though, is streamline your process to find an optimal option strategy for your given assumption. I have spent 25 years digging into these details of these underlyings and have found a process for you guys to follow in order to increase your probabilities of success with these strategies. Strike location, duration, all of those things I will explain to you so that you can easily spot the best op, uh, option strategy for any given move. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and uh, stay safe. If you can't take that, take it easy.